NASCAR's West Coast Swing is officially in the rear view mirror and several big name drivers find themselves in deep points holes. We're going to discuss just how concerned those drivers should be. How's it going, y'all? My name is Eric. Welcome to Out of the Groove. I hope you're having a fantastic week. A couple news stories to hit on real quick, and then I want to focus on some drivers that aren't off to the best of starts in 2022. But before we get to all that, this episode is sponsored by my friends at Moby. Moby is a brand new company that makes men's grooming devices, such as their all new dual system beard trimmer. Moby's beard trimmer features an adjustable five step guide for perfect hair length. It's got ultra hygienic silicone bristles that deliver power powerful sonic vibrations. It's fully waterproof. It comes with an epic charging stand. Look at this thing. It lights up the room. Futuristic and highly effective. You notice my beard has been very neat and tidy in recent weeks. That's thanks to the Moby Beard Trimmer. You can check them out for yourself by heading to Moby.com or by clicking the link down below. You can find where they're in stock at a Walmart near you. Be sure to check out Moby and thank you to Moby for supporting Out of the Groove. Now a couple quick notes before we talk about some drivers I'm worried about. First, Bob Pockers reported earlier this afternoon that it's now up to teams when to use wet tires if NASCAR declares the track wet during road course events. There will be no more damp declaration prior to the race and no more mandate of rain tires. Of course, this won't come into effect until the Circuit of the Americas race in a couple of weeks, but just an important detail added to the rule book. There was some controversy last year, especially when NASCAR threw that caution at the Daytona road course late in the race for what they considered to be damp, wet conditions and kind of assumed teams teams would put wet tires on and then nobody did. Clearly was an entertainment caution. Now, I don't know if this means NASCAR may still throw a yellow if they deem the track to have gone from dry to wet conditions. This still may give NASCAR race control that control, but at the very least, teams will not be forced to put on a certain kind of tire. It's solely left up to the driver and crew chief to decide, which is a good call. Second bit of news, tomorrow at 1 p.m. Eastern time, NASCAR and IMSA are expected to make a major announcement. The press conference will be held at Sebring International Raceway, which has led many to speculate what they're going to announce. I've heard everything from, oh, they're gonna add Sebring to the NASCAR schedule next year to they're gonna add like a next-gen Cup Series class in IMSA and more and everything in between. I don't know for sure what they're gonna do. I've heard some rumblings behind the scenes, but I'm just going to wait until the official announcement tomorrow afternoon. I'm a patient man. We'll talk more about it tomorrow. I'll be curious to see what they announce. Now, NASCAR Man History, great YouTube channel. He collaborated on a video earlier this week with Brock Beard, all about the ASA. And actually in that video, they pointed out the fact that NASCAR recently bought the trademark for the ASA, American Speed Association name. I've seen a lot of folks on the internet speculating what that could be about. Could NASCAR be bringing back the ASA? Could they maybe be looking to use that branding for something else. Maybe that's where this IMSA announcement comes into, into play. Could this be the all-new electric series that NASCAR keeps suggesting and talking about? Who knows, but it's just an important detail I wanted to highlight. Again, we'll know more tomorrow afternoon. I'll probably do a video then discussing the actual announcement. But the focus of this video today is the points. We're only four races into the Cup Series season, and I know, with this format, one win at one track could completely turn a driver's season around. But after these four races, and especially now that we're done with the West Coast swing, teams are getting to come back home, spend more time at the shop week to week, this feels like the first sort of checkpoint of the 2022 season, and I thought we could look at some drivers who didn't have a great time out West and discuss just how concerned some of these drivers should be. Some of these drivers maybe missed out on a great opportunity or two. Some of these drivers maybe just got off to uncharacteristically slow starts and are looking for a race or races to turn things around. Let's begin with a rookie. I don't want to pick on a rookie, but Harrison Burton driving for the Wood Brothers currently sits 31st in points. He's ahead of only two other full-time drivers, Cody Ware and BJ McLeod. And let's just say Harrison's had a tough time avoiding other people's wrecks. His best finish this year so far was a 16th at Las Vegas. Look, I didn't have high expectations coming into the season for Harrison Burton. He's a rookie. He's one of the youngest. He might be the youngest full-time driver in the Cup Series. Does Todd Gillen have him beat? No, Harrison's younger. I, I think Harrison Burton's the youngest driver in the Cup Series. Point is, I didn't have high expectations coming into this year. I, I think the Wood Brothers knew he was going to be a project, a multi-year project. That car made the playoffs with Matt Benedetto in 2020 and you know just missed out on a playoff spot last year with Matt Benedetto. I don't think anyone realistically thought that 21 car was going to be a playoff contender this year, but I hoped he'd be better than 31st in points. It's only four races in for sure. I don't expect Burton to finish the year 31st in 
points, but things are going to need to turn around rather quickly. Baby steps, of course. You got to learn to walk before you can run, but Harrison Burton right now has a long way to crawl to get himself in a more respectable points position. Next, I want to talk about Christopher Bell. This has been an awful start to the 2022 season for Christopher Bell. He's 30th in points in a Joe Gibbs racing car in his second year with the team. Remember, he has Adam Stevens as his crew chief as well, a two-time Cup Series championship crew chief. 34th, 36th, 10th, 26th, crashed at Daytona, spun at Fontana, and then blew an engine later on, finished 10th at Las Vegas, started on the pole, that was the one bright spot, but then again, spun at Phoenix this weekend, finished 26th. There's a lot of pressure on Christopher Bell. Young Toyota drivers are always under a lot of pressure because there's always someone else kind of waiting in the wings with a big old grin on their face and a lot of trophies in their trophy case. In this case, that might be Ty Gibbs, the team owner's grandson, who's already racked up a few trophies in the Xfinity series. He's full-time this year. 2023, 2024, Ty's going to be looking for a Cup Series ride. And if Christopher Bell doesn't start to pick things up, there's pressure on him. There's pressure on him for sure. You know, he might get bailed out by a guy like Truex maybe retiring, or maybe Gibbs doesn't renew his contract. Who knows? But right now, there's a lot of pressure on Christopher Bell, just as there was a lot of pressure on Eric Jones. And right now, Bell isn't getting the results. And it's not all his fault, but he's certainly off to a slow, sluggish start this year. And it's also concerning because he's a dirt racing guy. And I thought it was interesting. After Chase Briscoe won at Phoenix this past weekend, he said during his post-race press conference that he feels the new car and the new procedures favor dirt racers, drivers who have a strong dirt racing background. He meant that more when talking about the procedures, the very limited practice and qualifying time, the very limited track time drivers get before the race on Sunday. That's a very dirt racing thing where they just get some hot laps and then go racing in the feature. You look at the point standings right now, you got Kyle Larson is fourth, Chase Briscoe is fifth, Tyler Reddick is ninth, Alex Bowman is 11th. Drivers who all have strong or somewhat strong dirt racing backgrounds are all sitting pretty in the points right now. Ricky Stenhouse is back in like 23rd, but you know, that's a JTG car. I'll cut him some slack. Christopher Bell is in a Joe Gibbs Racing Toyota. He should not be 30th in points. It's early in the season. I expect him to turn things around, but if he's not careful, he's going to find himself in a must-win scenario before too long. And that's even more pressure to put on this guy, a guy who's already under probably more pressure than a lot of other drivers in the Cup Series. Let's stick with Joe Gibbs Racing. 27th in points right now is Denny Hamlin. And more surprising than that, Denny Hamlin has yet to finish inside the top 10 this year. Now, he did have one of the best cars at Las Vegas, was probably going to finish maybe even in the top five there until he blew all the gears out of that thing coming off pit road. Just an honest mistake. I'm not going to hold that over him too much. But what I will hold over Hamlin are his continuous and consistent miss mishaps on pit road. Obviously he had the shifter issue that was on him. And I've already counted at least two speeding penalties through the first four races this year for Denny Hamlin. He's notorious for speeding on pit road. Sure. But you'd think the guy's 41 years old now. He's been doing this a long time. You'd think eventually he would learn how to not consistently speed on pit road. Everyone speeds on pit road occasionally. Kyle Larson, Kyle Busch, Tricks. Everyone will speed on pit road a few times a year. But Hamlin routinely is at or very near the top of the list as far as number of speeding penalties. It's been a struggle once again this year for Denny Hamlin. And for Toyota as well, Phoenix was not a good showing for Toyota teams. I know Kurt Busch and Kyle Busch stole like fifth or seventh place finishes thanks to some late race restarts, but nobody out of the Toyota camp was consistently running inside the top 10, Denny Hamlin included. I think there's cause for concern if you're a Toyota fan, but more importantly, if you're a Denny Hamlin fan, he only won two races last year and it took him until the playoffs to finally win. He didn't win until race 27 last year. I'm not panicked. I think he's going to win a race before the playoffs. I think he will be in the playoffs this year, but that's that's not the goal for Denny Hamlin. Playoffs are not the goal. Championships, or at the very least, championship four appearances. That's the goal. Anything short of a championship four berth this year is a disappointing season for Denny Hamlin. And if he doesn't start to win races sooner or run up front more consistently, collect some stage points, preferably collect some playoff points by winning some stages, he may enter the playoffs with very few playoff points to his credit. And that's going to make getting to the championship four way more difficult than it's been for Hamlin in recent years. So I'm not worried about Hamlin making the playoffs, but he's missed out on some opportunities early this year to put himself in a better playoff situation come October. I'll stop picking on Toyota for a moment at least. Eric Jones. Let's talk about Eric Jones. I like Eric Jones a lot. You guys know me. I'm an Eric Jones guy. I've been a supporter of Eric Jones since he was coming up through the truck series. But he has blown some great opportunities already this year. 
That team has had speed. They've been much faster than I think any of us expected them to be. I mean, he was top five out in LA for the clash, ran up front with the leaders at Daytona, got caught up in a wreck, can't fault him for that. But then Fontana went out there and finished third. But since Fontana, Eric Jones wrecked with just a couple laps to go at Las Vegas. He had an easy top 10 in his sights and blew it. Similar thing happened at Phoenix. He was probably gonna finish like 15th or 20th, but still solid top 20, get the points you can get. And he spun out in the closing laps and heard his finish there. He's lucky to be 19th in points. And honestly, 19th in points for the 43 car is actually a really good start to the season. The reason I'm concerned is because he's blown so many opportunities. He should be much higher up in points than 19th. He should be arguably top 10 in points if he was able to finish Phoenix and finish Las Vegas. And I'm concerned because maybe the 43 car will be fast all year long. Maybe they'll continue to show this top five, top 10 speed on a regular basis, but for a team that hasn't shown that kind of speed ever, I'm worried that the beginning of this year is kind of a fluke. I'm worried that they're gonna be one of the teams that fall behind as the year goes on. As the big teams figure out the new car faster, I worry Petty GMS will be one of the first to start to fade. So. They have speed early this season. You got to get the finishes when they're in front of you. And Eric Jones has blown it two weeks in a row, unfortunately. So that's why I'm a bit concerned. 19th in points is great, but I'm worried that's the best he's going to do this year. Maybe he steals a win at some point. Maybe that team continues to show top 10 speed, but they haven't done it in the past. I wouldn't bet on it at this point. And lastly, I said I'd stop picking on the Toyotas, but Toyota is off to a, an, an iffy start. A lot of up and downs. You got Kyle Busch like second, third in the points, but then you got Hamlin and Bell outside of the top 25. Let's talk about a guy smack dab in the middle of the point standings, Bubba Wallace. I saved him for last because out of all these drivers, he's probably the guy I'm least concerned about. Coming into this year, I didn't have Bubba Wallace making the playoffs. I had him probably being the first guy out. Right now he's 17th in points, but he's largely riding on that podium finish he got in the Daytona 500 where he finished second. His best finish since Daytona was 19th at Auto Club. But that team has had pretty good speed. Both Bubba Wallace and Kurt Busch typically start these races out maybe a little behind, running 20th, 25th, and then they work their way forward. By the end, they're usually top 10, top 15, like Kurt Busch snuck into the top five late at Phoenix. But Bubba Wallace unfortunately has run into roadblocks a couple of times. Like at Auto Club, was running better than 19th, but he got involved in that incident with Brad Keselowski where maybe he came up a little bit, clipped the six car, and that set off a wreck that damaged the 23 car and hurt his ability to run up for a top 10 spot. Las Vegas, I'm not gonna fault Bubba too hard. He was running again in the top, I think he was in the top 10 when Eric Jones crashed and NASCAR was very slow to throw the yellow, put Bubba in kind of a vulnerable spot. He had to swerve at the last minute to avoid the 43. That caused him to wreck his car and damage the front end. So some of these bad finishes, I'm not even gonna put all on Bubba Wallace's shoulders, but you wanna talk about drivers with pressure. I mentioned how it feels like a consistent thing now. Toyota drivers are under a ton of pressure because they know TRD is good equipment. And Bubba Wallace, factor in all the sponsor support he has, factor in the fact that he drives for Michael Jordan, factor in all the fan support and the critics that he has to hear on a weekly basis, Bubba Wallace is under a ton of pressure. And it sounded like at Phoenix this past weekend where he didn't run well, it was by far that team's worst performance of the season, it sounded like that pressure was getting to him. I, I heard some clips on, on Twitter and then of course on Radioactive this past week that Fox Sports put out. Oh, it's not unbelievable because we can't get the f car better. I'm trying to stay calm, but I'm over it. It's terrible. I just don't like what I'm hearing there. Like, I, I understand it's heat of the moment. Every driver goes through it. But like when Kyle Busch has those moments or in the past when Jimmy Johnson would get snippy with Chad Knauss, you could kind of excuse it because Kyle Busch wins a lot of races. Jimmy Johnson wins a lot of championships. When Bubba Wallace gets a little impatient over the radio and just sounds just fed up, it makes me a little concerned because he's only won one race. He's never made the playoffs. This is still a growing team, a team that's trying to grow and get off the ground together. I don't like to hear those kinds of emotional interactions and outbursts. Now, again, I didn't hear the full thing. Again, I heard snippets earlier in the week, and of course, we only heard what Radioactive played right there, but I just, I just don't love what I'm hearing. First time this year where they had a bad car, and they didn't really work well together, it sounds like. Bubba Wallace has always been an emotional guy, so I'm not surprised to hear this. This is how he is, and it, it works for him in many ways. The highs are high, the lows are low. Not gonna try and read too much into it, but kinda like Eric Jones and kinda like Denny Hamlin, he's missed out on some good opportunities this year. Top 10s were certainly possible at both Las Vegas and Fontana, and 
In some cases, the incidents were out of his control. In others, they weren't. He failed to capitalize. And then Phoenix, they struggled. I say Bubba Wallace for last because I'm not as concerned about his current points position as I am some of these other guys, but I am still mildly concerned by their performance this most recent week. Anyway, those are some of the drivers I'm concerned about given their early season points positions. Let me know down in the comments below. Are there any other big name drivers maybe a little further back in points than you expected them to be at this point in the year? Are you less concerned than I am about some of the drivers we just talked about? Leave your thoughts down in the comment section below. That's gonna do it for this episode. Episode. If you're new to the channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button. We talk NASCAR day in, day out. We've got that big announcement tomorrow. It'll be interesting to react to. You're not going to want to miss it. And then, as always, a huge thank you to my amazing Patreon supporters as well. I couldn't do the show without your continued and very generous support. We'll be back tomorrow, likely, with more NASCAR news. We still have to talk about Atlanta coming up this week. This is going to be a wild weekend for sure. Some weather maybe on Friday, but Saturday and Sunday are going to be huge unknowns for sure. Thanks for watching, y'all. I'll see you in the next episode.